welcome back here to Garoka. My name is Ryan. We're heading out to Sandeni today to actually drop off a bunch of building supplies and some fuel for this mountain airstrip here in Papua New Guinea. And as you can see behind me, it is a bit cloudy out. It is rainy season right now, so pretty much every morning we've got like low clouds. So what I do is I look at all the ridges that I know of, like known altitudes, and that gives me an idea on how high the clouds are. So looking at the Garoka Gap up there behind that tree, I know that that's 8,500 feet. The clouds are just right above it, so probably around 9,000. And then we have a bunch of low-lining clouds all down here just south of the field. But all of that should be clearing up by the time I get out of here in the next hour. We just topped off the oil. I just got off the phone with weather out in Sandini this morning. And well, it looks like here, <laughs> lots of clouds, probably not doable right now. We're gonna wait till 8.30, another hour and check weather again and see if it's open. As you guys can see, it is a really nice day out. In fact, it's a brand new day. In fact, it's even a brand new week since I filmed last time. You see, it's rainy season right now, which means it makes it a lot more difficult to get into some of these places like Sindeni. It was actually cloudy all the way down to the airstrip for two full days straight last week. Then the rest of the week, I actually already had other flying to do that was already scheduled. So now it's next Monday, <laughs> the next Monday, and we're heading out. Brad is going out there though with me today. Um, first time for him landing out there, so this is going to be exciting. So the other thing about today is we're actually going to make this into a two-part video. We're going out to Sandini, getting coffee, dropping off some supplies, building supplies and some food. And then also on the way back, we're actually stopping by iBuy to pick up a sick lady that we were supposed to pick up a whole week ago. We are just now finished up with tying everything down, loaded, so let's get out of here. We're already a week behind. Morning through November Tango Echo. Quest taxi, Goroka, uh, Sandini, 2 POB. Normal Tango Echo, Goroka Tower, good morning. Taxi to runway 17 left. Center back track line up, QNH 1020, temperature 18, time check 55. 1020, time 55, and inner back track and line up, runway 17 left, November Tango Echo. There's actually a little bit of ground fog starting to roll in finally yeah. at almost 8 o'clock now. Look at that, we didn't even get out on a good time. We were all wheels off by 8. It's helping they load up on Friday, doesn't it? It sure does. Thank goodness. There's a lot of loading too. Yeah, 800 kgs. Condition flaps, verified 
Full. Harnesses are locked. Checklist is complete. There you go. I'm ready. Hey, power set. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed's alive. ITT is below 740. We'll continue. I marked a couple things there. That is where we're going, Sandini. Okay. I want you to go to the, the Narambi Gap and then over top of this hill, right over top. So we're going to be coming in a different way than Marawaka Gap that we've been always doing. Group John, everyone, Tango Echo departed. Time zero zero on track 151, climbing 900,000, estimating send any time 26. November Tango Echo. Copy roll, 9000, contact Mosby on 120 decimal 7, it's 662215 miles. 15 miles, contact Mosby 120 decimal 7 or 6622, no for Tango Echo. So as we go out this way, what's one mountain that we always go that you could Sierra, do? Oh, the, the drums popped. Um, that we can go off real quick just for at least our first point going out there just because we are using pilotage today. This, uh, this big mountain right here, Canabiga. Canabiga. If you say it like, in, look how it's spelled. It's called. It's like kind of bigger. It's not like a big mountain. It's just kind of bigger. <laughs> kind of bigger. <laughs> I like it. Far shot. Kind of bigger, and that's uh, 7,900. That's around. Sierra Delta Foxtrot, QNH 102. About 17 miles out. 1021, Sierra Delta Foxtrot. Alright, that chime is just letting us know we're almost 9,000 now. 200 feet more to go. It looks like it's, yeah, gorgeous out there. You can see all the way down. All the way down to where we're going nearly. From this perspective right here, can we pick out anything out there that we know, like specific landmarks that are really easy to see from, you know, 30 miles away? All right, we're just actually wow, approaching 15 miles, miles, so let's give them a call and then we'll keep talking about what we're, what exactly where we're going. Sierra Delta Fox Road, run me to... Where's me? 120.7, never take my echo, Tran transfer. Station 120, they 47, go. Where's B? Uh, November Tango Echo. 900,000, maintaining 900,000, one five miles south of Goroka. Estimating send any time, 2-6. Copy it, one zero zero niner and affirmative send any time two six. I'm thinking it's unreadable, unreadable. Uh, confirm estimate send any two six. Request your transmission on six six two two. Call again six six two two. And more to be six six two two. November take echo. I'm thinking it's already six six two two. Read them on this one. Uh, and speed November Tango Echo, reading you strength two broken. Uh, we are estimating Sydney time two six, and we've got area QNH one zero zero niner. Tango Echo, no report traffic. November Tango Echo, thirty miles. The easiest thing is look for gaps, okay? Because they're the easiest to pick out. It looks like there's a nice valley going across right here. Thinking uh, like on the horizon. Something the that horizon. you can something that you could just pick out. Okay. So that's where I'm going. Who cares about all the rest of it? We yeah. know that that's where that is, so Yeah, I mean there's a huge gap just straight in front of us. What do you think that one is? 
Houston or on BGAP. Uh, okay, so if we're aiming, to, remember how the Narambi Gap is right above Samogu? Which way does the Narambi Gap go? It goes that way. We're looking for a gap that goes the same direction as us. It's the gap that we always use to go in to uh, Sindeni. Have you really been out there? You've been out there a couple times. I think so. It's been... It's been a while. All right, is so it that's the Marawaka? That's the Marawaka gap okay. that we're looking at. Okay. So looking over here, you can kind of see that it's in the clouds, all the ridges. You can't see any of the ridges until they start coming back down. Uh -huh. That's where the Narambi Gap is, is off to the side over there. Okay. So we want to go to the Narambi Gap and then come around the, to the right side of St. Denny instead of coming off to the left. Okay. All right, this is also a great time. While we're just sitting here, let's go over the strip chart together. Ryan, 5,500. It's 2810. I need runway 28. 7% slope, 540 meters long. We're going to stay on 120.7. Left hand circuit. Middle is short final. All right, so a couple of things. Um, it says it's a 7% slope, but our actual touchdown slope is only 4% and it's actually a negative percent. Like it's not even like where we're, or we'll actually be touching down. It actually just kind of slopes downhill a little bit. Okay. So it's really important that we aim for the correct spot and we don't land too early because, let me just see if I can do it on here. Um, okay, so the runway goes like this. At the very end, it comes up, okay, and then it, yeah, it kind of crests up, and then it kind of goes down, and then it kind of goes back up like that, all right? right. And the windsock is right here. So we are aiming to touch down at the windsock. So I always just start aiming for like this brown, just dirt area, just a little bit before, about a plane and a half before my actual touchdown zone. I'm aiming to that. Once I get there, as I'm approaching, I just go just full idle and then just kind of sit there. I don't add any extra knots because even though it's a 7%, but that's really all up in here. Okay. That should and be then, well after touch. Yeah. And then it's a very slight kind of just downhill and it, it's really smooth usually where you land. But if you pull your power off too late, then we'll float all the way up here. And then now we're actually landing into a slope and it'll probably be a harder landing if that's the case. But you don't want to land too early because there's a little bit of a crown right there. So if you land here, you touch down, it will actually shoot you back off, and then you'll just sit here and float at four or five feet off the ground, and then just stall and have a really hard landing, and it's really sucky. Okay. So, aiming to touch down at the wind sock. Okay. Um, if the winds are coming, let's see, where are we at? Documents, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna be coming in from this direction here. The wind sock's here on the left at the very end. If the winds are coming up the valley this way, we're going to expect stronger downdrafts on short final, basically after our committal. Okay. If the winds are coming from the opposite direction, we're going to probably expect just unstabilized approach. It's going to be a lot harder just to maintain it because it's going to be kind of jockeying you all around because there's a lot of higher train over here that's swirling it around. Uh, if the winds are coming to the left, it's typically a fairly smooth approach. It's just get ready to add power on the downdraft and then immediately pull it back out. So be thinking there's two steps to downdrafts, not just adding power because there's going to be, you're going to come out of the downdraft and then all of a sudden you're going to have to pull the power back off really okay. quick. Okay. Our go around procedure is, um, I would say, yeah, mid to late final. If we do have to go around, we are 100% full up today. So we're gonna actually wanna bring our um, go around procedure back just a little bit. And we're gonna add power 20 degrees, pitch for 11 degrees. And we're gonna fly to the end of the runway before we start making a turn. Unless we're far enough out, we realize, yeah, this is, this is just not working. But worst case, we're gonna fly to the end of the runway and then make a hard right hand turn out. Um, just because that's going to give it, you're going to see the valley actually opens up. But if you start your turn early, sometimes you're kind of turning into terrain a little bit. So we'll take a look at it once we get there. And then the touchdown zone. The, so it says elevation is 5,500, but down here in the corner, 5,300 is the touchdown zone. So 200 feet lower than what it says up here. I wish they would just put the stupid elevation yeah. at the touchdown zone. Yeah, but, that makes more sense. Um, so yeah, we're going to do 6,300. 
It says 61. I always turn at 6,000 and turning final 5,800. There's another runway on day that's directly across the valley on this other side. And those are my key positions where, you know, I'm just turning here, squaring everything off, and then I'm turning to where I'm basically turning final, rounding out right over top of the runway just about. There's a couple of trees that as I'm turning, I'm, I'm wanting to be right over top of those little grouping of trees. And that's gonna line me up really well, right at 5,800 feet. And we're just aiming to a spot. And this one, because it's such an open valley, we're really gonna go off of our numbers. We're gonna call out our winds and we're gonna verify, yep, we're on our 550 feet per minute descent. Um, and then our speed is uh, within two knots or so coming in above the ref. Oh, that's the Marilaka Gap. We kind of come up, Samogu's down there. Narambi, Nar we're looking at two gaps right here. The Narambi Gap is this lower ridge, okay. and it goes into the big valley. You'll see once we get in. Okay. And then you can see kind of that swooping next ridge. Uh -huh. That's where we're going to go across, and we're going right. to go right down and around. There's not a gap. That swooping one isn't a distinguished it's not, gap. not a distinguished gap, no. Okay. But a lot of times, if there's a lot of clouds, you can see they just sit right there on the ridges, but then they drop off right there. So that's why it's easy to go through the Narambi and around and find some way. Worst case, you can go through the Narambi and just continue going all the way around to Anacombe. It adds on probably an extra five to six minutes of your flying, but it's a very low route that you can get in at 4,000 feet or lower. So really right. below pattern altitude for Centeni. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just get my checklist started so that as everything hits later, be ready to roll. Make some selectors. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just get that off now. Eyes uh, off. Be ref. Oh, this is an Arapa gap. I'm pretty sure it's around 7,200. Jeff and I were looking at this last week. And if you can start remembering those, it's going to be really helpful on crappy weather days. Uh, Marawaka, it's around 8,600 that I feel comfortable going through there with. I don't remember what the next one is up there. This one is 72, I did verify that. Okay. All right, Samogu's just down right here off my wing. You go there very often? Um. Used to more often. I was. I've been out. I don't know. I think last a couple of times I was in December, so a couple months ago. Okay. So again, right there in front of us, that's the Narambi Gap. Um, this whole lower ridge right here is okay. the Narambi Gap. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess directly in front is our lowest point. Okay. Oh, our plan is to pick up some coffee out here, and then head out to Ibai, pick up the sick lady. Hopefully the weather is much better than it was on Friday. And I tried to get in there on Friday last week and the winds are just way too all over the place. <laughs> we just weren't able to get stabilized at all on final. So tried it twice and then realized it's just not worth keep trying it. 6300, we're gonna be entering the downwind. We're actually gonna be coming in uh, from the south of it. What's the um, what's the uh, OBS for that? For a runway, is it 2.8? 2.8. All right, I'll just set up your OBS just so that it's ready to go when you Thank get there. You. I'll also throw it up here just on the bigger map just so you can kind of see where we are. There we go. Officials, Sandini, November Tango Echo is in the circuit, Sandini. RSV 6622, November, Tango, Echo, in the circuit, Sydney, cancel SAR. November, Tango, Echo, Sydney, Sauer, terminated. November, Tango, Echo. All right, do you see it? Yeah, this is it down here. There's another one over there, it looks like. Yeah. This should be the one that we're doing. All right, so position yourself that you can just make a left-hand turn and then fly right back over so that you're looking at it from here and then all the way back around and the whole turn. Hey, it looks nice and clear. 
What's the wind sock doing right now? Um, looks like it's going to be a right crosswind, I think. A right crosswind, okay. The wind's up here going this way, so they must be hitting these hills and then turning right back around. All right, so Correct you can headway. see kind of all that kind of dark area right there by the wind sock. I just kind of aim for some ambiguous spot in that area so that okay. I can touch down by the windsock. Actually, just touch down just a couple feet past the windsock. If you land at the windsock, that's still kind of right in the top of the crest. You can see there's that lower, that lighter brown area just past the windsock coming up. Huh. And that kind of just in between the, the a windsock and that area is where we're looking to touch down. Okay, and how far out do we need to come? Point nine. So right as it hits point nine, take your left hand turn. And then we're dropping to six thousand by the end of this valley up here. You can see the other runway over here. That's where we're turning final. So just line up with your OBS down to six thousand. There's a grouping of little trees down here. Let's come over here to the right a little bit more. 500. Give you more space. Right here, I go full flaps, turning final now. Then checklist is complete up here. We're slowing to 74 knots. A three knot headwind, eight knot left cross. And expect a downdraft because we've got left winds. 150 feet per minute descent. All right. A little steep on the descent, line. but now we're back on slope, so add some power in. Okay, there's 74. Okay. 650 feet per minute descent. This looks good. There's no wind. Now committed. That's three. Or fifty descent. That's three. Controls to park us up there because okay. I know how he wants us to park. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and unload this. We'll pick this video back up in the next video, um, unloading this stuff um, and hopefully handing out some balls, uh, soccer balls and rugby balls to the schools here. There's two schools here. Uh, then on uh, iBuy. So if you guys are interested in uh, watching the next one and a little bit on the ground content here, make sure you watch the next video right after this. And if you guys want to fly the same flight that Brad just did, I screenshotted this, so I'll leave that on my Patreon page if you guys are interested. See you guys next time.